Hi friends, Mrs. Harris here. Today we are going to create a one point perspective color wheel. Your I can statement is I can create a unique color wheel using a one point perspective drawing a city scene. First let's look at what one point perspective is. It's a drawing method that shows how things appear to get smaller as they get further away, moving towards a single vanishing point. It is the way of drawing objects on a flat piece of paper to make them look three-dimensional or realistic. It's the way the artist creates magic. Long ago, artwork was very flat. You can see how things that were important were bigger. In this image, you can see the table is really flipped up at a funny angle. Nothing feels real. It feels very uncomfortable to look at this image. In this picture, we can see how everything is getting smaller as it moves further away from us, but it's actually moving towards the vanishing point, a point in which things disappear or cease to exist. Artists began to use vanishing points in their artwork to fool our eye, to make us believe we could reach right into the canvas. Van Gogh has done that here in his bedroom scene. We can also see these bottles, how they're moving back to that single point and they're getting smaller. Remember, it's an illusion. They're moving up on the plane. The trees are a great example of how the color is getting lighter as things move further away from you. We're going to be changing our viewpoint when we create our drawing. We're going to be using the worm's eye view. It's where the objects are viewed from below as though the observer were a worm. It's the opposite of a bird's eye view. Finally, we're going to make a color wheel. It's the arrangement of colors and their relationship to one another. I want you to remember about our friend, Roy G. Biv. That's the order that we're going to be laying our colors out in. Roy G. Biv is the rainbow. Lastly, I want you to understand value. Value refers to the lightness or the darkness of a color, and your buildings are going to have value in them. Now let's look how to make the project. I am starting with a square piece of paper. Mine is 12 by 12. Whatever you can find will work fine. I need to find the center of the paper because this will be the center of my circle. I'm drawing an X from corner to corner using a ruler. Once I have located it, then I'm going to get my compass. Compasses come in all different kinds. Here's a traditional compass. I'm placing it on the center and then I could draw my circle. The other type of compass that I have available to me is a plastic one. That one, I will hold the center piece on the center of the circle, place my pencil in the edge, and I'll go around. We might not have a compass at home. If you have a piece of string, a shoelace, that simply will make a compass. Take the string, put it on the center, tie it to a pencil, and then create your arc. Once I've created my circle, I'm going to begin to add my buildings. Again, I'm drawing very lightly. I know it's hard to see, but I'm moving my ruler around and creating the sides of the building. All your buildings are going to touch. Notice all of my buildings start at the vanishing point and they go out to the edge of the circle. I'm going to be creating different heights of my building where I'll add the rooftop. I don't want them all one height. I want some short ones, some tall ones, some fat ones, some skinny ones. You're going to need at least 10 or more buildings. Once I've drawn my, all of my buildings and added all of their detail, I'm going to outline everything with black marker. Please don't get hung up and think you need a ruler at this point. This should all be freehand drawn. All the lines from the windows and all of the details are always going to go back to that vanishing point. If I was to draw straight lines on the building, it wouldn't make sense. Everything has to appear to be going that way. You can really begin to see our worm's eye view coming to life, and you can see where the vanishing point is. Now up in the middle, between the buildings, you'll notice a lot of negative space. That's your sky, and you're going to get to choose if it's a nighttime sky or a daytime sky when we begin to add color. I'm just going to pretend I'm done with the black marker. We're going to erase all the pencil lines moving forward. Now it's time to add color. When we go to add the color, we're going to do it in the Roy G. Biv pattern. The best way to do this is to have a plan, lay it out. So what I've done is I've gone through and I've counted all of my colors. And I've decided I've got more buildings than I do colors. So some of my colors are going to be repeated. You can see I'm very lightly giving it a letter underneath the building. I'm spelling out Roy, G. I did two G's, Biv, 
When adding your color, watch the pressure. It should be heavier towards the bottom. I'm working in small circles. That's the easiest way to apply colored pencil and crayon. Notice that my two red buildings aren't the same value. One's a little bit darker and one's a little bit lighter because I've added some orange. Take your time, work your way around. Dark towards the bottom and lighter towards the sky. Once you've completed it, you can decide if you want to have a daytime sky it could be gray, it could be blue, or if you want to do a nighttime sky with some stars and notice the black with the blue around it. Have fun with this. Can't wait to see what you guys turn out.